Um, so I had um, Aisha from Atlanta and Megan from Juno in my group. And um, we started with uh, Megan uh, really feeling in a place, um, it to me seemed like surrounded by water, um, where, um, where she just took over um, as the ED of the organization and is in the process of trying to sort of reorganize through strategic planning and clarification about what their mission statement should be. Um, because it seems like it feels not effective in communicating what their mission is. And, um, and she's struggling with trying to get, um, to get commu the community engaged with the program. Um, and, and so, uh, so, you know, that was, <laughs> overwhelming <laughs> um, and um, and then on the other side Aisha who was like you know this is our mission statement we empower underserved youth to achieve their highest possibilities through music and we make everyone on our staff memorize it and our board created it so they are fully invested in in promoting that mission and that was like wow that sounds cool <laughs> like um so so you know most of what she talked to us about um was was super inspiring frankly because you know she they're 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 doing all of the regular you know avenues for marketing and promotion but um but obviously finding real success in doing that and and building on their um, community connections by doing, um, she talked about the music of the African diaspora, which they, they designed for their Black History Month um, concert series and, and, you know, sort of figuring out how to get every kid in the organization engaged in, in learning about and performing um, Black comp composed music. Um, which also is like, wow, like, I, I feel like, you know, it was, it was everything that Aisha said was incredibly aspirational <laughs> to me. Um, but, um, but we also talked a lot about needing to, to make sure that the mission um, is communicating really clearly and, and what Aisha said really drove this home is short enough for people to be able to remember and clear enough for everybody to understand what you mean. And, um, and I, I think, you know, for me, like our mission statement is, you know, to you, Project Music uses the transformative power of music to affect positive social change for those students most in need of access, opportunity, and inspiration, which um, I, I feel like sounds really wordsmithy um, and, and maybe is not as clear as it needs to be. And, and you know, our organization has never done a strategic plan. So, so part of the work, you know, that, that I have to be doing is, is figuring out how to do that. And, and, and also like thinking about other communication channels to use for marketing and promotion, um, through community partners. So, um, so that's what I've been working on a lot, you know, reaching out to the school, the community center, the, the symphony, the whatever local organizations are, are peripheral, but, but partnered with the work that we're doing and, and get their help um, to, to sort of spread the word. And, and um, yeah, um, so, and, and there was a lot of conversation also about trying to figure out how to address um, the issue, specifically in, in the mission statement and communications about what, what our organizations do um, that's so vitally important outside of just teaching music. Like, like so much of the work we do is, you know, social, social development and youth development and, and self-esteem building and mentoring. And, and so sort of how to, how to make sure that whatever the description of that work is, 
is coming through in our mission statement because I think especially now with all of the stuff that's going on, um, it's even more important for people to be able to say like, oh, Project Music, they're the ones that are like changing the world through music <laughs> and, 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 you know, so figuring out how to, how to create that kind of a statement, um, it's challenging. Yeah. Yeah, there's, well, and I think we've all, we've all been hit with so much all at once as well that it's taken a lot of time and a lot of, of pivoting to get through all those messages. But yeah, I mean, I think too, that's a great idea. Clear mission statement, clear, short, easy to remember. That's huge. That was, that was yeah. a big learning piece for me. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and not like we don't all know that, like we all know that, but, but really yeah. sort of re-examining if anybody who looked at our mission statement would be like, oh, I get it. That's what they do. Like, I, I think that there are lots of people are, who are like, well, but what do you do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where do you do it? And, yeah, and so, yeah. Thank you, Felice and Felice's group. How about, Katie, who's, who's next up? Jen Guzman. About hey, five minutes, Jen. Oh, hi. I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I met with Stephen from Yola, and we had a nice conversation because we're both from bigger organizations, and our education departments could really be a nonprofit on its own. Um, we just connected over the positives and uh, hurdles that come with that. So. For instance, you know, our, both of our um, mission statements were about youth empowerment, youth development. Um, I want to just make a point, which I know we all do in Elsa Summer programs, to focus especially now on the social emotional support and um, just thinking about our programs in the fall and the message that we can communicate to parents so that we get more buy in. Um, sorry, my dog's about to bark. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it's real life right here. Real life. Huh? We're all in it. It's real okay. life. We're good. No worries. Okay. My cat has walked past the screen like three times in this. I'm meeting. gonna ask you what her name is. Yeah. <laughs> it's Ivan. Yeah. Very cute. Can you hear me still with my dog like yelping? Okay. Um. So I'm gonna move on to this. <laughs> okay. So with Mark, with um. Sorry. I Hold on. Jen, do you want to have Stephen? Stephen, do you want to jump in? Stephen has to jump off the call, so it's just oh, me. I see. Well, go on. You oh, guys know. Give us a little I'll chat back. time when you're ready. Let's okay, I'll come back. back. Sounds good. Let's okay. move on to um Anne Henry. So there. Okay. Um, we actually we spent a lot of time talking about how we communicated um, internally during the pandemic, not, and not only between students and teachers, but among the staff and, and with the parents. And all of us, and, uh, this group had um, Taylor Fulton from the Harmony Project, uh, Sarah Zanussi from Communica Communication, um, Debbie from Brazil, and me. Um, anyway, we were making sure that um, in, in order to make sure that, that the students actually participated in our online programs, it turned out that we needed to spend a lot of one-to-one -one, uh, communication time with parents or families. And as a result, we've gotten to know the families a whole lot better than we ever have before. We, uh, we typically see parents either when they're picking their children up or at a concert. And it takes several years before you actually feel as if you know a family, whereas now we've been in touch with almost everybody many times. Um, in fact, just to, to make sure that uh, we can communicate exactly when things are expected to happen, um, it's just taken a lot of attention and time, which is it's not a bad thing. It's a, you know, it's a good thing. Everybody feels as if they're more invested in each other now. So I, I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, getting kids to show up for the online sessions has been an issue. Um, partly it's it, it's because sometimes they are in different childcare situations from day to day, and so they don't have the same uh, access to technology or just their same, the schedules are, are 
jumbled. Um, so that's been an issue. And then um, how, to, how to market um, when they're, the program when there's really no visibility in the community. Um, we're all very much online, but we're not visible to other people at the, at the moment. Um, there have been a number of people who are doing online concerts or online um, presentations that are open to the public and we market them through social media. But it very much feels as if, I'm, 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 I don't, I don't want to say voiceless, but the, the communication that we rely on in terms of doing public performances is just not available in the same way. So that's, that's been the downside um, of the uh, internal and external communication. But then we also were looking at how the messaging um, has evolved around the, the Black Lives Matter and the racial injustice topic. Um, it's so sensitive that we don't want to seem as if, and I say we, I'm, I'm, t I'm speaking broadly for everybody. Um, we don't want to seem as if we are jumping on a marketing bandwagon because it's the right thing to do. We want, you know, it, it's, we want to feel as if we are holding ourselves accountable to a different standard. And that's been a very um, difficult thing to put, to articulate um, without a, not necessarily knowing who's looking at your, your, your website or your uh, Facebook page, so you don't know how it's going to be received. But it's, um, and I, we didn't come up with a, with a solution to this. We just were acknowledging that this was a hurdle for a lot of people in terms of, of messaging. And Sarah, if I le left out anything, jump in. Okay, then. I'll pass the baton. Okay. Jen, do you want to go ahead and... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> um, so I'll just pick up where I think I was, which was at the second question um, about how Stephen and I both connected. We're from big organizations. So, you know, we have the powerhouse of a team that can make, they can take our raw footage of students and the content that we get and really make it into something that can go farther on the internet or, you know, be used in a lot of ways. Um, but, you know, there's also more steps and maybe more time that goes along with that. So pluses and minuses. Um, but we, all, we, we got a little bit on some tangents, but just the biggest, one of the biggest things we talked about was finding buy-in from all the parties that we work with. And, you know, of course, like teachers, students, parents, um, and I missed, Anne, the, the beginning of what you said about how you were connecting with parents, but it sounds like you've maybe been calling or emailing them a lot. A lot of, of both. Uh, lots of telephone calls initially and then follow-ups with text. Text more better than emails. That's what we're learning as well. It's, it's been hard to uh, just have clear, clear communication with them. So I've been trying to brainstorm about ways to, you know, crack that nut to make it a little more efficient to actually get the message out to people and and have some response. So we just talked about that. Um, and then Steven at Yola, he said that they did a round table discussion with some Young Strings alumni and Gustavo and uh, talked about the Black Lives Matter movement and how that affects their programs. And um, same in Dallas, you know, our, our young musician program, the El Sistema program is just a year old last month. Um, you know, and got cut off by COVID. So we're just in the very beginning phases of it. Luckily, um, you know, we had 300 students enrolled right before March and just over a hundred as have stayed with us through right now. Um, but, you know, it, it's like 95% Hispanic and we really have, there's a large black community in Dallas that we know we need to serve. So um, that's a big initiative for us. That's been on the docket already, but was just highlighted the, the um, pertinence of it highlighted again by the events this summer. So, um, you know, we, we partnered this summer with a, a church that was doing a STEAM science, you know, what STEAM science, technology, um, engineering, and a, a church that was doing a virtual STEAM camp and we provided most of the arts content. So we use that as an opportunity to try to, you know, just look honestly at ourselves and, and see how we could realize what we're doing, that how it's not enough or how, you know, we could do more um, to be advocates and 
and and just make sure that we're highlighting things that we could be highlighting people we could be highlighting so um we had some activities about black composers their music just you know recordings and trying to make sure that we're like everybody's been saying just including it in our programming so a lot of i agree with everything else people have been saying it was a lot of repeats from us so um yeah it was nice to have the conversation and to hear from everybody today excellent thanks john and thank you Anne, as well i think yeah the um communication especially now through the pandemic and through the the attention to racial um, inequity in our country is hugely important all the time but especially right now when people are really watching more um katie and her assistant flew in for a kiss um, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, jessica you go and, oh me go okay um i was in a group with michael jones from rock music um also in association with the eastman community school of music um diogo oh diogo may i ask you to pronounce your last name so i don't butcher, butcher it diogo pereira pereira <laughs> close Good. all right so yeah, yeah diogo sorry. from harmony project phoenix um, Mary Sorley from um, Harmony, is it Harmony Project in with the Greater Twin Cities Youth Orchestra and me from Harmony School in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So the first thing we noticed is that um, there's a lot of harmonies floating <laughs> around in this group. Um, I guess we, we started out kind of talking about various methods of reaching our our students and our families. Um, we talked about the language that we use. So mission statement also came up um, and qualitative versus quantitative language. So when we're writing a grant application, we might write in a very kind of stilted academic sense with a lot of data and statistics Whereas when we are um, communicating with our families and our students and our community, it's more um, inspirational, more qualitative, more emotional. Um, we um, talked about a couple of apps, like WhatsApp seems to be incredibly popular. Um, and then I think Diogo also mentioned, is it Air? Help me out here. I've got it written down somewhere, but I'm not finding it. Airtable is as a, an online platform for communicating with students. And that's one I hadn't heard of, so that was kind of nice. Um, we, along with language, we also talked about um, really being mindful of the language that we're using when we're talking with our kids and our families, but also with the community. So eliminating things from our, our lexicon like um, low income, at risk, underserved, minorities, you know, those those things that um, would imply that the people we're working with are less than, um, and doing that at all levels of communication. Uh, Lacolian's um, topic from, I think it was earlier this week, also came up, his, his suggestion, suggestion to use the word partner rather than serve the community now implying uh, an equal equal level of power between the the neighborhoods that you work with and the the teachers and the administrative staff of the the program um let's see texting came up a lot with dealing um with communicating clearly with families and then as far as reaching out to the broader community that got a little stickier i feel uh, we didn't have as many ideas for that one, but um, social media really came up as kind of the, the number one way to communicate, especially when email lines are sometimes jammed with all sorts of school communications and um, for those families who don't have email or don't check email. Um, 
Yeah, and I think um, we we spent a lot of time talking about the first two questions. So I'm afraid we didn't we didn't get to the third question, but we're excited to hear what everybody else has to say about those. Great. Uh, so we have, I think, three more groups to go in exactly 15 minutes. So Emily. Hey, so uh, I, in our group, we had um, Denise, who's a public school music teacher who has worked in the Los Angeles Unified District. Um, we had Lolly from, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, from Atlanta Music Project. Um, and Sandy, who is um, not with an Elsa Summer program, but is a friend of the LA Phil and big advocate for the work that we do. Um, so we had a pretty uh, diverse group of people, which was interesting. Um, one of, we talked, uh, because we had Denise, who's worked a lot with LAUSD, we sort of talked a lot about how these issues come up in the public school space um, and how often those of us who are doing the work don't always have control of the way that the work is being communicated out in the community and the way um, the way the work is being funded and so there's a lot of questions about you know when you're when you're working in that space and you're sort of you know you know Denise was saying she's she's partnered with um, you know when she was teaching in school relied on um, partnerships with places like the community school at the Colburn School who has a lot of great programming um, and other sort of resources to kind of, you know, when there's students in the classroom who, you know, want to have extra resources or an after school thing sort of partnering with those groups. But again, like when there's um, a lack of support from the school district or from a principal for music, sometimes these programs get cut and, and that's reality. So messaging around that gets a little complicated and how do you keep in touch with your students after something like that happens so lots of questions around around that um lolly was highlighting all of the um amazing online content that Atlanta music project has been doing and i'm sure everybody's seen that it's so cool um and what an amazing way not only to uh you know work with the local community of Atlanta but also you know we were watching that stuff in LA and I'm sure everybody was watching it all over the place too so um that was really neat in terms of marketing the mission um and Lolly said something interesting too about the you know the subject of how how we're responding to to racial justice and uh it really comes back to the way that the young people are responding and she was talking about um a few examples of beautiful poems that students have written in response to the uprising around racial justice and um kind of and i just love the way that like her first response in that question was really just like centering the the, the young people in the conversation about how how we're looking at um the way that we're communicating about racial justice and and kind of doubled down on you know one thing she said that i also thought was interesting was that um supporting black students in atlanta is always has always been and will continue to be um a priority of the program and i think that's true and that you know and it's not to say that um that's sort of you know us saying well we already do this it's no it's like even more reason to double down um and really commit to serving, you know, black and brown young people. So that was really cool. Um, just looking at my list here. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this stuff was already covered from others. Um, I won't say too much about Yola because it sounds like the Yola stuff came up in Jen and Steven's talk, but um, yeah, that's it from us. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, and our last Amy. speaker is Isabel. Hi, everybody. Uh, we had a very interesting chat uh, from, uh, so it was Rosalinda from the Mexican Heritage uh, School of Art and Culture, Martin for, from Ecuador Musical, uh, Katie from uh, El Sistema Programs that uh, is in Trenton, and uh, that is uh, sponsored by uh, Princeton and El Sistema Santa Cruz. So I think everybody covered more or less uh, what we talked about. There are two things I want to highlight that seems different. And we have, for example, Rosalinda, who is in charge of uh, 
Arts Education at the Mexican Heritage Plaza of School of Art and Culture. And their mission is basically advancing uh, art and Mexican art and culture and uh, through a lot of ways. And music education is only one of the ways. And what they decided to do is to pivot and to provide food to their families and the area in San Jose that has been very affected by COVID. However, um, they are thinking about um, cutting the music education part of their program for next year. And so uh, Rosalinda was uh, joining our group to see, you know, what, what to reflect and to tell what she was facing right now, which is, you know, she thinks that the mission of the program in general is not going to be affected, but her part of the mission is really going to be affected. So right now she's really trying to find a way to save music education uh, in that uh, environment. And the other thing um, that was interesting came out from Martin. And so Martin is based in Ecuador and his project is to uh, mix indigenous instrument with classical music. And so he was really trying to find ideas, marketing ideas to have his project more well known, you know, in the Americas and not only in Ecuador. And so he was saying that he's using a lot of social media, but then it gets a little bit uh, buried because there are a lot of initiatives. So he was wondering how it can use marketing in order to really be more uh, relevant and seen. So I think that the two things that uh, were different from the general discussion, Rosalinda with what's happening with her art education program, with a music program in San Jose that is uh, not doing well, not per se, but because of the larger mission of the organization and Martin who is wondering what he should be doing in order to reach out more people. That is a really fabulous topic and <laughs> I wish we had more than about three minutes to talk about it. I, does anyone have any, I, literally in about two minutes here, does anyone have any thoughts about how to push your message through the noise? Oh, we're all equally stumped. <laughs> I guess um, for me personally, I have found locally that just time, a lot of really consistent posting over a long period of time helps out with social media. Um, sorry. I think the biggest thing. Somebody, Michael just said something as well. Michael, did you want to say something? Nara was about to speak first. She should go. Okay. Yeah, I can go. Um, I just was going to say that I think um, don't underestimate the power of word of mouth. Like, start with the people you know and get them to talk to their friends. Um, we were in the process of board recruitment in this, and we were trying to approach people cold, and it wasn't working. But then once we started reaching out to people who already knew of us, I'm reaching out to their networks, we were able to get three new board members. So that's my thought. Mine was a little bit related. Uh, I said inclusion and collaboration. Usually your videos are including uh, a certain amount of students or, and or teachers. If you're able to uh, tag them, have them also support and share, have them interact, have their families interact. I mean, that's how we get more people in the concerts. So really um, having the focus be maybe not on the organization, but on the collective, and then the collective kind of raises it a little bit. 
That's a really good idea. I think, too, if there are any um, particular members of the collective that have ties in the states that they can specifically write a personal message to and say, hey, could you please make sure to share this on your page? That would be, I mean, it's a little thing, but do that <coughs> over a period of time and it might, mm -hmm. yes, it might help, it might pan out. Okay, I absolutely hate this part of the meeting where we have to wrap it up. Um, I've got a final words slide here somewhere. Uh-oh. There we go. Okay, Katie, did you want to go ahead and wrap up our conversation today? Yes, thank you so much everyone for joining us. Uh, we feel that hearing from the voices of the people on the ground doing the work and the members of the community who are the participants in the Sistema programs are our experts. So thank you very much for participating and for sharing your ideas. Um, we will be sharing the recording of this uh, session both through the El Sistema USA site um, and with all of you through your registration and Yola National, I'm sure Emily will be sharing it also through uh, your registration with Yola National at home. Uh, we hope that you'll join us for future conversations again, specifically in this partnership, be on the lookout for the performance from our third through fifth grade students who are members of LSSW USA in California. And our next session coming up, we've got uh, some events for executive directors coming up in the month of August, and we'll be launching our new online series uh, in August, in August slash September. Thank you so much to everyone. We're here for you, and I look forward to seeing you at the next El Sistema USA event. Bye. Bye. Take good care. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Can I make a, a really quick plug for a YOLA national session on Monday that I think this group might be interested in? Please. So I'm gonna put it in the chat. Um, we have a session on Monday and I'm putting the link to the information in the chat. It's about youth development and music education from some of our partners in Boston from Health Resources in Action. They are awesome. The way they talk about youth development is really, really cool. I'd really encourage you to sign up. Um, it will be live and it's also available on YouTube later, but if you can catch it live, that'd be great. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks, Emily. Thanks. Bye, everybody.